Okay, so I'll um, hand over to Professor Kalman now to do acknowledgement of country. Thank you, Tom. Hi, everybody. Can I recognise that um, we all, uh, all of us here in Australia at least, uh, uh, are uh, sitting on Aboriginal or Torres Strait Islander lands. And, uh, and I'd just like to do an acknowledgement to recognise uh, Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander peoples, the first peoples, uh, to recognise their elders, uh, past and, uh, and present, and uh, also recognise our youth who are going to be our future leaders and the custodians of our stories, our cultures, our histories, and our languages. And, and it's uh, so important that we, we all grow up our young people because in the sector that we all work in, or you particularly work in, um, the aged care sector is where uh, we'll all end up at some stage. So uh, in, in recognising uh, people, I'm on Larrakia country here in Darwin, about up on the plain as, as mentioned. Um, and this is my, my home turf because I'm Kungarakan on my mother's side and Iwaj on my father's side. Uh, and they're, they're, they're both those countries are just outside of, of Darwin. So uh, welcome everybody. And uh, on behalf of traditional owners and custodians across the nation, uh, welcome. And, and, and also to recognize in the, uh, the, the spirit of reconciliation, um, you know, that uh, we uh, recognize all the non-Indigenous uh, peoples who are, are now residing in Australia. And welcome to all of our, our friends who are coming in uh, internationally. Thank you so much, Tom. I don't know what time you need to leave us, but we're wondering if you did have a few minutes to share with us your experience at the Council of Elders for the Australian government. Yeah, look, there's there's a couple of things. Firstly, to to, to recognise and to uh, acknowledge and congratulate uh, the formation of Ghana, uh, which is so uh, so important at this time. And uh, as is there, I'm also the Chancellor of University of Canberra and have been for the past nine years and and uh, uh, I've had the pleasure every year a couple of times a year actually and I always I always choose uh, our health graduates and to to engage with our our um, our nurses and midwives through through um, our health graduations and so it's always been you know dear to my heart and and uh, as I've mentioned to the to the executive team in our previous encounters that, you know, my mother passed just last year and the care that she got in a nursing home in Darwin and she was just approaching 90 years of age was phenomenal. And, uh, you know, it's a real credit to the, to the sector, um, both the, the registered nurses and, and the enrolled nurses uh, who provided that support. Uh, so I've been a long-term, actually decades long, uh, supporter of um, of CODA, uh, the Council of the Aging, and uh, and uh, have spoken at a number of their events over the years. But uh, more recently, uh, have been appointed to the uh, Aged Care Council of Elders, and uh, I'm one of probably a dozen um, members, and and uh, they have a, a great range. And there's three three of us Aboriginal. Uh, members on the on the committee, which is uh, which is good, and I always like to say that uh, uh, one of our members, old Bell Fells, who, who you may may know, is uh, 93 years old, and really uh, you'd never, you know, I've been on many many councils and boards, and Val holds her own with us, and uh, and it's a real credit as as a to the other board members who all all represent the ageing sector. I'm one of the young ones on it. Um, uh, so it's, uh, you know, it's great to see that that there is, uh, you know, a, a lot of respect being provided and directed towards uh, older Australians, uh, which is so important. And and where, where uh, I think uh, this group is so important, um, because through the, the Council of Elders, uh, you might be aware that out of the Royal Commission, there was a recommendation that nurses should be available 24 seven in nursing homes across the nation, which poses a phenomenal challenge, uh, A, to find enough nurses uh, to be able to maintain that and, and for aged care facilities to be able to uh, afford to engage 
uh, a registered nurse 24 seven. Uh, that poses challenges, but equally challenging uh, is the availability of nurses uh, generally. And when you start to get down to the specializations like uh, gerontology uh, and gerontological nurses and palliative care nurses, high demand and low supply. And so, you know, I think the university sector really does have a role to, to play to start to ramp up what we're able to do in these specializations and, and being able to offer them. And I think this is where Ghana is, is so well placed to, to put pressure on the sector, um, you know, and on the government to make sure that we're, we're able to do it. Because whilst government's aspirations are currently you know, to have, um, you know, nurses uh, in the in the uh, aged care sector and across the board, actually, um, the supply and the, the the actual funding to be able to support the developer nurses uh, hasn't quite caught up with with the demand. And so, you know, uh, groups like like Ghana will have a, a you know a really important role to play in in good strong advocacy and and lobbying. Uh, within the sector because you know the the members are the specialists and know what we're doing and and you know uh, and we need to make all politicians and bureaucrats understand that they too will get old and they too will be requiring the services at some part of their life of of um, a support nurse be it uh, you know palliative care or gerontological nursing and uh, or general nursing and so you know, this is such an important sector. And and uh, I, I wanted to just, just close by saying that, you know, and, and to acknowledge uh, the uh, the councillor deans and the, the approach they took earlier in the year to do a formal apology to Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people and the role that Katsanam played in that, um, you know, being able to help facilitate that apology uh, because it's so important that that all of our professions um, and I'm a social worker by by trade, so to speak. Um, you know, and and uh, that we all we all look at the role that we played in the past, and the role that we need to play into the future uh, to ensure that all of our services are are uh, able to be accessed and uh, recipients of services that are uh, that are not discriminatory, that are not uh, racially uh, contextualized. And and that's so important. And what we don't want um, is another royal commission to point out some of the things that we already already knew and we we need to address in another another ten years and find that we haven't addressed them. So there's a role for all of us, a in the care, but also to make our our workplaces culturally uh, safe and linguistically placed. And it's not only for us as Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people, but um, for all called communities uh, to be able to receive you know, the first class services. And of course, the real challenges are once we get out um, into the regional and remote uh, parts of Australia to be able to have our specialist nurses out there, which, uh, which is difficult. So that also throws a challenge for the sector into e-health and how do we deliver uh, that level of support? How do we develop up the capacity of, of um, you know, other health professionals to be able to to take on, uh, you know, all the gerontological support that's needed uh, for older Australians. And we are getting older. So look, I wanted to just say that, uh, thank you for inviting me to to be part of your your group as a, as just as, as a supporter. And I wish you all the best uh, uh, in the future. Thanks. Thank you so much for opening our launch. You were there at, literally at the beginning when um, Crystal presented us with her painting. So we're so happy that you're here today as well for the um, external official launch of, of Ghana. And we very much welcome your support and be able to call on you um, as Ghana um, grows in its influence and the number of uh, members that we have and, and the different types of members so that we can actually have special specialist interest groups that focus on those really important areas, Tom. And I know that we will, we've already talked about it, a really inclusive, um, you know, alliance and to make sure that, that all of our members of our population are, are being adequately serviced.
one of the reasons we chose the word alliance within our acronym was to reflect those values. And we are going to work hard to make sure that we live out those values. And um, later in the afternoon, Cash is going to um, talk everybody through our mission and how we plan to make sure that our mission matches um, our values. So thank you.